going on, everybody? You see a Jaguar back with my second podcast, and I have with me the folks at the Sports Fury. What's going on, guys? Yo, oh, what's, what's up, good? Man? What's up? What's up, UCF? What's How not you much, on, man? man? Hey, man, you guys have had me on your show so many times with NFL predictions, talking Jaguars and stuff like this, and I honestly have so many subscribers at my channel that are always like, I'm here from the Sports Fury, this, this, and that, so... You know, I've been having some people want me to bring you guys on the show, and I'm glad to finally guys have you guys on. We are absolutely yeah. happy to be here, man. Thank yeah. you for inviting Thank us you, on Appreciate UCF it. Jaguars channel. Uh, yeah. one our, you're one of our favorite YouTubers, man. Absolutely. Yeah. We're excited, dude. Thanks, man. Hey, man. Appreciate that. But uh, today we are going to talk about the quarterback free agency class. And this is unlike many other years where you have a ton of quarterbacks coming out. I mean, I remember last year kind of looking and yeah. the top prospects were Mike Glenn and Brian Hoyer. But this year, we're going to talk about mm -hmm. five different guys that kind of top the list. Kirk Cousins, Case Keenum, A.J. McCarron, Teddy Bridgewater, and Sam Bradford. And we're going to basically project where they go. Yeah. Now, there are a ton of quarter – every, every year there's a bunch of teams that are looking to upgrade their quarterback position. Uh, this year, you have teams like the Cardinals, Bills, Browns, Broncos, Dolphins, Vikings, Jets, you know, all these teams that are looking for quarterbacks. So these guys are all going to earn some money somewhere. So you guys ready to get this thing started? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. You ready, Sean? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So we'll start off and talk about the most prolific quarterback out of this bunch, the guy that's going to become the richest player in the NFL, and that is Mr. Yep. Kurt or Kirk. Cousins. Uh, I'll start with one of you guys, Josh. Like, where do you see Kirk Cousins kind of ending up in this whole thing? Well, me and Sean, both of us unanimously, for months now, before the season even yeah. ended, we said Kirk Cousins to the Minnesota Vikings. It yeah. just makes too much sense. You got Pat Shermer. I mean, Pat Shermer is now the coach over there in New York Giants, but they yeah. got John DeFillipo. Offensive yeah. coordinator, which I think is still a really good option over there. Yeah. And they got Mike Zimmer. You got all those offensive weapons with Thielen and Diggs, uh, Rudolph over there. You got Dalvin yeah. Cook. That yeah. run game is solid. That offensive line is solid. You got a good defense behind you. I mean, look, the New York Jets, the Denver Broncos, they can give money to. I mean, the Jets, they're looking at the Jets at most. Yeah, they're looking yeah. to give him like 60 million in the first year. I mean, that's incredible. But the Minnesota Vikings give you the best opportunity if you're Kirk Cousins to win now and later. Yeah. I think they're the best team. Yeah. Hand down. Minnesota Vikings. Sean? Yeah. Did I miss anything? No, no. The, I know the only question mark on the Vikings is do they want to spend that much money into a quarterback because they do have yes. a lot of pieces they might lose in about two, three years. They might lose a lot of core pieces on their defense. Yeah, they, they're, I think they will. They're very yeah. interested, it seems, with Kirk Cousins. Uh, I think they're going to try to pull the trigger. Yeah. And uh, it's all, all on Kirk Cousins. Does he, does he want the money, or does he want a place where he can win a Super Bowl the best? Yeah. And now Minnesota Vikings, they can't offer the most money like, like the like Denver the Broncos or the Jets. Yeah. However, it's not that big of a difference. He's already gotten yeah. paid. This dude's already made money. Yeah. He's not going to lose a whole lot more going yeah. to Minnesota. So why the hell wouldn't you do that? He's played on the franchise the last two years and made a lot of money. But, yeah, Vikings. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I'm honestly rooting for him to go to the Vikings just because it'd be an interesting measure, measuring stick for the Jaguars because you could say the Jaguars in Minnesota are very, like, equal teams kind of in the way they both have really good defenses, invested early round picks on running backs like Leonard Fournette and, like, Dal McCook and – you know, their run game is kind of like the identity, and obviously their window is now. So the Jaguars went kind of conservative and stuck with Blake Bortles to kind of spend that money on, you know, other free agents or other guys to kind of keep in-house and keep the team together while they're going with the approach of let's get this yeah. really, really good quarterback and maybe, you know, sign to a three-year deal where we're going to almost be like the Broncos and have this little window to kind of win, and then they might have to go into like a full – Rebuild kind of rebuild kind of mode, but I honestly think that he's going to go to the place that offers him the most money, and I honestly think that he's going to be a New York Jet. The Jets have, uh, you know, so much cap space to make it happen. They already said they're going to go out and do whatever it takes. So no matter what, they're going to be able to outbid the Minnesota Vikings. And then I think when it comes down to it, these guys are going to pick where money goes. You know what I mean? He's even you got to think even if this deal is like five million less dollars. 
it's still $5 million more million in the other place. So I really think that he's going to end up on the Jets. Now, yeah, I, w- now I will say this, too. Now, if you go to the AFC, the Jets yeah. or the Broncos, it's not as stacked over the AFC as it is in the NFC. Yeah. So you put Kirk Cousins on the Minnesota Vikings, that makes them a Super Bowl contender, I feel. Yeah. But you still got so, mother- so many other teams to contend NFC, with. Yeah. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to be much better next year, even Saints. though they just won the Super Bowl. You got yeah. the Saints. You got Falcons, Falcons who are not going to go. They Rams. should come back. The Rams. Yes, you got- the NFC is stacked. Aaron Rodgers coming back next year with those Green Bay Packers. So if you go – AFC, you're playing with the Jets, you're yeah. playing with the Broncos, you're playing in a conference that's not as stacked. Maybe you have an easier road to the Super Bowl as opposed to the Vikings. Yeah, and, not, and let's not take away, like, I know we said the Vikings are Super Bowl contenders, but let's not take away from the Jets. They have weapons. You know, we Robbie saw Anderson. Robbie Anderson last year did good. Jermaine Curse did great. Uh, Jenkins. Jenkins. They have weapons over there. Now, running back Bill Powell still has some question marks around him, but besides that, they have a pretty solid good team. They overachieved, in my opinion, on offense, you know. Uh, last year, so the, the steps and steps, they're going to do better. Kept their core of their coaches and Todd Bowles, and that that's impressive. I really wouldn't mind like seeing him going to the AFC because if he goes to Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> me being a Chicago Bears fan, yeah. that will kind of suck, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah, definitely, that's, you're that's definitely. Hand for yells, uh, but personally, if I'm fucker to Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely right about the whole NFC, just because you look at the NFC playoffs, and you can make an argument. Yeah for every single team to make the Super Bowl. You look at the AFC side, and then you had pretty mediocre teams like the Titans and Bills squeak in there with playoff spots. Uh, You know, the Chiefs were obviously falling apart at the end. So, really, the AFC, it seemed like they only really had three good teams, and that was the, you know, Jaguars, Steelers, and, like, Patriots. So, it's going to be a lot easier for him to really go into a team like the Jets because uh, the Jets, I mean, I think that they're pretty well coached. I mean, people give Todd Bowles a lot of shit, but – you know, he went 10-6 and six two years ago. That was overachieving. You know, they overachieved this year when people yeah. were saying that they had the were going to have the worst team in NFL history. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they agree. So, he can yeah, come in there and, yeah. you know, he'll be able to a quarter of the season he's playing against the Bills and playing against the Dolphins. And, obviously, he's going to have a more AFC type of schedule. So, I mean, the road to, you know, the playoffs – would be yeah. huge for a team that has one of the longest playoff droughts right now. Yeah. Now, the one thing I will say, talking about the AFC, yes, it's an easier conference, but let's look at both those AFC teams in their divisions. The Jets, you have to deal with the Patriots. More than likely, no, no offense to Kirk Cousins, you're not going to win the division, right? Oh, no. So you're not that, – that's going to be tough, as long as Tom Brady's there. Now, if he goes to the Broncos, that's a tough division in itself. You have the Chiefs, you have the Raiders. Chargers, you have the Raiders. With Gruden back. Exactly. So either – He's going to an easier conference, but at the end of the day, when you go to these teams, you want to win your division and guarantee a spot in the playoffs and guarantee a home game at least one. But going to these teams, that doesn't guarantee you're going to win the division. You know what I mean? If you go to the Vikings, though, even though it's a tough, tough conference, you're more than likely you could easily compete with their Rodgers and win the division. And honestly, if, it, if it's money, he chooses money over where the best yeah. situation – over best situation, yeah. I'd be shocked. I mean, like I said, this dude's already made his money. I yep. mean, come on. You're going to still get a great contract with Minnesota. Not as big, yeah. but I'd, I'd be kind of disappointed if he chooses the money over, the, hope, hope. over situation. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. yeah, so I feel like with us, it's almost like I feel like he's going to go toward money, and then you guys feel like he's going to go toward success, which is ultimately what it's going to come down to. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see where exactly he goes. Mm-hmm. Now, we will move on to the next quarterback and talk about Case Keenum. Yeah. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and start this yeah. off. You know, Case Keenum, obviously, his NFL career has been kind of weird. You know I mean? He's been at, like, Houston. He was over at the Rams, and, you know, he was always, like, pretty subpar. But, you know, this year after Sam Bradford's in- in- the injury, he came in there and uh, really stepped up and played really well. You know, it really speaks to his worth ethic that he was able to – I uh, really have this good of a year when really he isn't all that physically gifted. Mm-hmm. Now, being that Cousins is going to be going to the Jets in my projection, I think Keenum will wind up staying with the Vikings and getting a pretty decent deal. You know, they're trying to swing for the fences right now to get, uh, you know, Kirk Cousins. But if they're not able to pull up with him, you know, bring in a quarterback that you've already had, bring in a guy that's, you know, you actually can already, you know, had on your roster instead of somebody that you're going to bring in that you never even shaken the hand yeah. of, like a guy like AJ McCarron. So 
Um, I think Case Keenum will end up staying with the Vikings. What about you guys? Uh, yeah. Well, Case Keenum, he's got some. He's definitely got some options here. I mean, yeah. stay. He could stay with the Vikings, and I would think yeah. that would be a pretty solid move. Yeah. Even if you get Kirk Cousins, you know, get, keeping Case Keenum a veteran backup. Yeah. Uh, he could go to the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, yeah. You know, the Cardinals decide they're going to draft the quarterback in this upcoming draft. Um, you know, maybe they want Case Keenum as a veteran there. Yeah. But uh, Denver Broncos. I'm going to say. Denver Broncos uh, yeah, because that's my top. Too. I think Denver Broncos are going to lose out on Kirk Cousins. They're going to draft a quarterback at five. Yeah. And it would be in their best interest to get a solid veteran like Case Keenum. Yeah. And maybe he could be the starter or uh, for, for Denver for a while. And until they bring in whatever quarterback they draft, maybe yeah. it's Josh Allen, uh, Josh Baker Rosen, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. There's a lot of guys. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> if I had to choose right now, I would say Denver Broncos go after Case Keenum after they lose out Kirk Cousins. Yeah. And uh, they draft a quarterback at five. I think that'd be the best situation for Keenum and the Denver Broncos. Yeah, and Case Keenum, uh, he's shown it in the past whenever he was with the Rams and they drafted Jared Goff. He was a very good teammate to Jared Goff, even when he knew his time's limited. He didn't – he was – he had no bad feelings towards him. He's a great, great teammate. People have always raved about how he's a good, good guy in the locker room. Mm -hmm. So that would be good if he goes to the Broncos. So that, I agree. I think he's going to go to the Broncos. Either way, if the Broncos mess out on Kirk Cousins and the Broncos draft him a guy – Case King would be perfect, a good guy to mentor that guy. Because these quarterbacks coming in the NFL draft, I know that's a different subject, but a lot of them still need a lot of work to be done. So it would be good to get a journeyman like Case King that's kind of been in a lot of different way, uh, situations mm -hmm. that knows how to handle it. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that going down. I mean, it seems like Case Keenum would kind of fit the personality type that a guy like John Elway would want and, you know, a guy he'd want to bring in. So yeah. next up, we are going to talk about former Alabama quarterback – A.J. McCarron. I mean, he's definitely yeah. known for his college career, winning, you know, at least uh, one national championship and, uh, you know, just doing doing work over there at Alabama and Nick Saban's system. So, uh, you know, he got drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals, and he's just been kind of sitting behind, uh, you know, Andy yeah. Dalton his whole career. You know, he had a little appearance when he played a little bit a few years back when he actually went into the playoffs and pretty much almost won them a playoff game before, you know, Adam Pacman Jones and their whole defensive debacle went down. But uh, A.J. McCarron, um, where do you guys see a guy like A.J. McCarron going? I think A.J. McCarron, he is somebody that wants to start immediately. He wants to go yeah. somewhere – where he want he has opportunity to start. That's what he wants to do. Yep. So there's a lot of so I, I, that eliminates a lot of these teams. I I, I think yeah. uh, I think the best chance for him to start immediately mm -hmm. would be the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. So I'm gonna have AJ McCarron going to the Arizona Cardinals, even if Arizona decides to draft a quarterback. Let's say they draft Baker Mayfield, right? Yeah. And they're not ready to put in May Mayfield right away. You know, they want to see develop him a little bit more. You start AJ uh, AJ McCarron. Yeah. Uh, that might work out right there. So yeah, I think the Cardinals would be the best fit right here if he's looking somewhere. He's going to start right away. Yeah, I could see that. Um, AJ McCarron he sh technically should have been a Brown if the trade would have gone through with the trade deadline. They wanted him. They wanted him. Now I was thinking maybe the Browns get him, but after the season progressed, now they have a two two top four picks. They're going to have a pick of the litter, right? They're going to be able to get a quarterback if they like any of these quarterbacks, right? Uh, but, yeah, I think A.J. McCarron is going to want to go somewhere where he wants – because he wants to play. He's tired of sitting behind someone, right? He doesn't have to deal with that. So, I like the Cardinals in that aspect. Another team that I like is possibly the Bills. I was just going to say, because yeah, that's the only other opportunity. Yeah, Sean McDermott, he's it's, it seems like he doesn't buy into Tyrod Taylor. He doesn't like his style because Tyrod Taylor is a check down guy. He's a tight end running back, you know. So, he wants someone that's been going to push the uh, ball down the field. Maybe A.J. McCarron will do that for him. So, maybe they go and get him and keep Tyrod Taylor and have him compete. And push each other so that that's an option right there i think mm -hmm. yeah i mean i could definitely see that happening you know the bills they kind of committed to tyrod taylor saying that they're going to keep them so you know yeah. i don't know if they're saying that so if that all else fails with a free agent yeah. or with you know a guy that they draft that they'll be able to have but you know seeing what happened last year after benching him for uh you know a guy <laughs> like peterman and then him coming in there doing what he did <laughs> nathan peterman yeah, oh, I mean, it's just, it's 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 yeah. hard to really uh, imagine that they're super committed to a guy like that. But for me with A.J. McCarron, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to go with the Browns because the Browns, they were willing to give up a second-round pick for a guy that was coming up on a contract year. So they obviously like the guy. You know, you don't just throw yeah. out early second-round picks like that 
even though they have like eight picks in the first two rounds, I believe. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I just see him going there. You know, I see the Kaiser. He needs a little bit more. Uh, I think sitting and kind of watching and not having a whole organization yeah. kind of on his shoulders. Still a young guy. I'm not saying he can't turn it around, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just think they like AJ McCarron. I think AJ McCarron has to respect the fact that the Browns were wanting to come out there and actually trade assets for him coming up on his contract year. So I'm going to have this guy reunited with Hugh Jackson, a guy he has been with before and yeah. going out there and doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. Back in Cincinnati, Hugh Jackson was his coach. So, all right, we will move on to Teddy Bridgewater. Now, this one is interesting because I feel like, you know, A.J. McCarron is a guy that's going to be able to walk into a place and start who hasn't even played any games in the last couple of years. Yeah. But neither is Bridgewater kind of coming off his thing. But it almost has a feeling that he may not be like a week one starter. But, you know, yeah. I think he may be able to find a team that does that. And – I think that team is going to be the Arizona Cardinals. Now, it's really hard to project what the Cardinals are going to do at quarterback just because they have a first-time head coach, Steve Wilkes, who's actually a defensive guy. Their offense coordinator is Mike McCoy, who, you know, what only time he was a head coach was when he coached over at the San Diego Chargers when he took over, you know, when Phil Rivers was kind of already on the roster. So you don't really know what yeah. the ideal quarterback is for these guys, but – you know, I think if putting Bridgewater on a team like the Arizona Cardinals, you know, I think that would be – I think he'd be able to there, go over there and, like, start day one for a team that doesn't have any quarterbacks on the roster right now. So, uh, what do you guys feel about with Teddy Bridgewater? Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, I think there's a few good options for uh, for Teddy. I mean, yeah, Arizona could be, could be one of them. But uh, you said Buffalo Bills with A.J. McCarron. Uh, I, what about Terry Bridgewater to the Buffalo Bills? I mean, that's somebody that they might like uh, as a backup to Tyrod Taylor or yeah. somebody they might just go with if they sign Teddy. And uh, he might be week one starter. Yes. Another option is the uh, New York Giants right behind uh, Eli Manning. Now, with that offensive line, Terry Bridgewater might not last in you know, a week. Not so much. Um <laughs> But um, the Miami Dolphins, yeah, that could be an option too behind Ryan Tannehill. If he gets He's, hurt, yeah. But the thing is, you know, would they want two guys with huge health concerns? Yeah. So if I'm gonna have to choose, I'm gonna choose the Buffalo Bills, Teddy Bridgewater. Hmm. I, I don't mind that. Um, Teddy Bridgewater to me, though, he's is, still young. He's, he's still, still young. young. I, honestly, I think he's not gonna be a starter really anywhere he goes right now. It's gonna yeah. be more of a backup role because uh, that knee he had a huge knee injury and. And yeah, he did play a little bit last year, and he looked decent. But still, until you get hit in that knee, it's gonna we're gonna have to see. I think my top option for him would be going back to Minnesota, where he's comfortable at. The coaches know him. Mike Zimmer has already praised him. He said he loves Teddy Bridgewater, how he's come back, how he's progressed. Maybe he comes back as a backup there, you know, because he's not gonna get paid that much. They can afford to get him, especially if they give all that money to Kirk Cousins, right? They can afford. If Ted Bridgewater is gonna be affordable, so I think Teddy Bridgewater might go back to Minnesota just to be the backup there. If Minnesota loses out on Kirk Cousins, I think Teddy Bridgewater should be their top option. Yeah, possibly. If they can't get, like, a case or something like that, Case Keenum. So. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, I agree with the, you know, Bills and, like, the Cardinals and stuff like that and, like, the Vikings. But uh, I don't know if I really see the Giants. It's because I saw a tweet by this one person the other day saying that apparently multiple NFL teams have, like, uh, reached out to Teddy Bridgewater's kind of like agents or something like that and talking about him having a starting role. So I think there are some teams interested. And, you know, with the Giants right now, their quarterback is Eli Manning, and he's he's like 36 years old. It seems old, but you have, you know, Drew Brees turning like 40, obviously Tom Brady 41, Ben Roethlisberger like 39. So, you know, I still do think that he has a few years left, and I think that, you know, he's going to go to the place where he would definitely have the best opportunity starting, you know, and I think – you know, Arizona right now with their quarterback situation, obviously have nobody. Yeah. I feel like that might be uh, where, like, he actually, like, ends up. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and move on to our final quarterback, the third Vikings quarterback that we're talking about, and that is Sam Bradford. Now, he was a former first-round pick for, for the St. Louis Rams, but – um, the guy just can't stay healthy. I mean, he's a good quarterback, got a great arm, but the old cliche in sports is the best ability is availability, and that is not an ability that he has. So, uh, yeah. Sam Bradford, if I were to put a landing spot on him, 
I could see him going to the Denver Broncos under John Elway. Uh, I feel like, you know, he'd bring him in there. He'd like his kind of accurate arm and stuff like that. Obviously, he gets, like, injured a lot. But, you know, if they can come in there and, like, bring in some kind of, like, run game and some kind of, like, offensive attack, because I feel like John Elway, he's – kind of the team's almost becoming irrelevant. I don't, I don't feel like John Elway's a guy that's going to want to take the gun to time to actually go through any kind of rebuild. So, you know, I think if he feels like if he brings in a guy like Sam Bradford, they might be able to do that. But what are y'all's thoughts? Uh, he might not last uh, – he might not, he might not last uh, more than two quarters over there in Denver <laughs> with, that that offensive, uh, with that offensive line <laughs> and going up against the likes of Joey Boats and Khalil Mack and the yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. My God. I mean, he get Sam Bradford could get murdered out there. Hey, for the right amount of money, he's yeah. going to sign that contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but that true. yeah, that could be a good option. Sam Bradford, with, yeah, you're right, with that with that uh, good arm that he's got with uh, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, if they keep him, uh, that could be – that could work pretty, pretty, good, work but, pretty uh, good, yeah. But uh, what about Sam Bradford to the New York Giants? I mean, Pat Shermer, he is familiar with Sam Bradford. He's familiar yeah. with Teddy Bridgewater and Case Keenum. Uh, you're probably going to want a backup for Eli Manning because he might not last that long. With that offensive That's line, awesome. uh, so you know, and the Dallas Cowboys are defense getting better. The Philadelphia Eagles, we already know what they can do. So, um, I think the Giants need to get a a, a veteran backup. Mm-hmm. Case Keenum could be an option. Uh, yeah. Sam Bradford, Sam Bradford to the Giants. Like I said, he's familiar with Pat Trimmer, who's now the head coach over there. So I'm going to say Sam Bradford to the Giants, backing hmm. up Eli Manning. I wouldn't mind with Sam Bradford going to the Cardinals, possibly, um, just because the Cardinals they just got a new head coach and he's a defensive guy, right? And Sam Bradford is that guy that he, he – just a couple of years ago, Drew Brees just broke that record. But a couple of years ago, he set the NFL record for completion percentage. Why? Because he, he gets the ball out of his hands quick, throws the short passes. And when you have, go with the defensive coach, that's what he wants you to do. Get it the ball out, get it into the player's hands, complete passes, move the ball. And Sam Bradford might not go out there and, you know, torch everybody. He can. We've seen him do it. You want a guy that's going to take care of the ball and complete passes and help that defense rest. So I think Cardinals will be a good option. Uh, Steve uh, Wilkes, isn't that his name? Uh, the new coach over there. Um, I think that's going to be a good option for him uh, over there in the Cardinals. Yeah, could be. I mean, Steve Wilkes, the, he's a defensive-minded coach. Yeah. Um, he's probably going to want a game manager. Yeah. That's why I have A.J. McCarron going over to Arizona because yeah, that's awesome. his label. He's a solid game yeah. manager. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. But Arizona Cardinals, uh, Sam Bradford, yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cardinals right now, they, they're such a tough team to project right now just because, you know, like what's David Johnson going to be like when he gets back? How's Steve Wilkes going to be as a head coach? Who the heck are they going to have as quarterback? And, you know what I mean? It's just so strange. And they're talking about perhaps like trading, you know, the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And obviously they've yeah. had some defensive guys, you know, leaving the last couple of years with Calais Campbell and like Tony Jefferson. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting to see like the direction – of that team going forward. Yeah. Yeah, and that free agency starts very soon. So, yeah, heads are going to be rolling. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> it's just I'm, about to pick up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, su- I'm super pumped. I mean, free agency is so cool to see, like, where these guys are going to be going. And, you know, it's not as cool as the NFL draft is because you get to see the guys come up there and hold yeah. the jerseys. But, you know, it's cool to see yeah. these kind of contracts. And I'm most – the thing I'm most fascinated of and thing I'm looking forward to the most is – not necessarily what team Kirk Cousins go through goes to, but what his contract is going to look like because it is going to be lucrative. Yeah, he's going to be the highest paid uh, quarterback until Aaron Rodgers signs. Yeah, until someone. <laughs> I don't know. I saw that. <laughs> Packers must just be like, man. Ah, yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't want to wait. <laughs> yeah. That sucks for all of us. Is he's going to totally reset the quarterback market? I mean, what quarterback isn't going to demand these type of contracts if Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers have them? You know. Oh, yeah. it's, it's whoever is the next up for a contract is going to be the richest guy for yep. the quarterbacks. It's always how it works. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Vegas. usually quarterbacks, they're like the highest kind of paid players, but at the same time, they usually sign with their own yeah. team. So it's like, okay, here's slightly more than the highest paid right now. Then all of a sudden, this guy is going to be like, what, 20% higher than the next guy? So, like, oh, yeah. Man. That's how it goes, yeah. And especially with this as a new quarterback, he's not, there's no hometown discounts or anything like that. Nope. This guy's going to want the max. Kirk Cousins', Kirk Cousins very yeah. interesting career. Yeah. His whole career is very interesting. Yeah. Fourth yeah. rounder. Yeah, it's a strange how, you know, the general manager wanted RG3, then that same graph, Shanahan wanted, you know, Kirk Cousins, and then 
They come in. Apparently, the coach didn't want one or three the whole time. And all of a sudden, Kirk comes in there, doesn't get respected by the owner or like anybody. And it's just like, like what the hell? And all of a sudden, they trade for like Alex Smith, like and they sign him to a long term deal. It's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't understand it. Washington um, Redskins for you. Yeah, Kirk Cousins, man, he's gonna have a chip on his shoulder. So whatever team gets him, you know he's gonna go out there and ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell, yeah. But, hey, guys, I uh, really appreciate you guys for joining the show. Everybody, you can follow the Sports Fury, Sports. Josh and Sean, down in the links below. Subscribe to their channel. Throw out a, hey, UCF Jaguar yeah. sent me. Also, you got their Twitter down there, their Instagram, their MySpace, their Twit, all, all kinds of stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever I can find, I'm going to throw down there for you guys. But, hey, thanks for so <laughs> the Thanks, man. Thanks we appreciate it once yeah. again for uh, having us on here, man. Yeah. Uh, it's always fucking great collabing with you. Always. Man. Always. Hell yeah. For the best live streams in the game, go follow yeah. these guys. But all right, guys, checking on out of here.